Well, thank you for having me this evening. It's a pleasure to be here again and, and be speaking to you all. I thought I would start this story um, with how I got to Presidio and how I got to Ola Zor. I care about marine conservation, and so I became a marine ecologist and started working on coral reefs. And I learned pretty quickly that the problems are people, and that means the solutions are people too. So I spent the first 10 years of my career uh, working with reefside communities through the Indo-Pacific, uh, running training programs to help people uh, monitor the health of their reefs and use that information to set up marine protected areas, no-take fishing zones that can help their resources recover. But through, I got to meet many, many people throughout the Indo-Pacific from Indonesia to Vanuatu. But there was one similarity every single time, and that was this recurring question. I know my resources are in trouble. I know I've got to stop fishing here or reduce fishing there. But if I stop fishing here, how do I feed my family? And it was that question that I realized I wasn't answering with my work. And I realized that I really cared deeply about it. And so that's what brought me to Presidio and eventually to all us all. And so I learned at Presidio, basically you've got to build on people's strengths. And I realized coastal communities know the ocean like no other. They must hold so many solutions, and I just don't think that conservationists are really uh, building strong enough partnerships and finding these solutions. So I realized that I had learned the skills to connect communities, science, and business together, and I should really take that opportunity. So that's what led me to All Azul. And since I started All Azul, I carried on meeting coastal communities and fishermen. And so I wanted to introduce you to one, Chilean. He lives in La Paz, in Baja California Sur, in Mexico. And when he was young, he was told that the ocean was so bountiful he could never overfish it. But as he got older, he started to realize that that wasn't true. And today, he says there's almost nothing left where he lives. As he watched shrimp trawlers come through, raking the, the seafloor, causing a huge amount of habitat damage, uh, destroying the habitat that the fisher is, uh, he, he used to rely on, um, rely on for survival. And in turn, the governments and nonprofits came through, established regulations to reduce fishing here, set up a marine protected area there. But they weren't answering that question. How do I feed my family? And so Chilene and others carried on fishing. And eventually he went to jail, and he spent two years in jail and thought about the situation. When he came out, he was committed to doing something about it. And he had an idea. Pearl oysters used to be in huge abundance in uh, the Gulf of California. It used to be a huge fishery, but they got overfished. But he'd seen them growing, and he thought, if I can help restore this fishery, maybe I could set up an alternative livelihood, uh, another revenue stream that's sustainable for my community. But he lacked the business skills, he needed some help, he needed some funding, and he needed support developing a market. And so All Azul exists uh, to connect these pieces together, to harness local knowledge, to bring in expert knowledge, to build connect connections to markets, and then do it in a way that creates uh, marine conservation outcomes on the ground. So All Azul creates transformational economic opportunities for coastal communities that drive marine conservation through the sustainability of the livelihood design, as well as by building uh, local incentives to support good fishery management practices. And so the problem we're solving is this poverty trap. No matter how the resources got degraded, be it through too, too high populations fishing or industrial fishing, uh, the current situation for many places is that continued fishing makes the, the resource worse. But how do people stop if they need to feed their families? So the solution we're working on is to build alternative uh, models for these communities to harness their local knowledge in, with the goal of helping them to restore their fisheries and then set the next generation up to thrive. So to demonstrate our model, we're working in two geographies. First and foremost, northwest Mexico, uh, the, the Baja Peninsula. There we're working on setting up a networked farm model, community-based model, uh, for low-trophic aquaculture as an alternative livelihood for fishing communities. 
first few years of, of Olazor, we've experimented with a few different types of uh, aquaculture, and we identified a really uh, interesting opportunity with seaweed. We're also looking to uh, start to develop some projects around bivalves too in the future, and we've done a bunch of research on shrimp and hope to um, improve the sustainability of that in the future too. When we started our seaweed project uh, a year ago, we had a Presidio team, EL team, come and help us design a, an operations plan for that. Uh, next year, we start to uh, look at production models um, around the seaweed, seaweed livelihood. In Indonesia, we're designing a sustainable marine aquarium uh, livelihood that involves catching juvenile fish. So this is where baby snatching is good. And we're growing them out in underwater cages, and this gets them conditioned to life in a cage, gets them used to the food, um, and, and helps them to do better. So we aim to create value both in the supply chain, but also to the consumers, the hobbyists. And another um, current EL team uh, have been developing a, 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 helping us to develop our marketing um, strategy to, to pitch these uh, products to the consumers. So what's our value proposition? How do we fund this? The important question. Well, the obvious way to fund nonprofits is donations and grants. In the marine cons conservation space, grants are hugely competitive. So we need to diversify uh, our funding base if we're going to really do this work and be able to expand. But to the foundation community, to people that really care about uh, conservation, we can help make uh, conservation work. We can help be... Um, you know, create the incentives on the ground to build local support for marine protected areas. But we can also add value to businesses as well, buyers of uh, seafood products, for example. And so that's what we've been very interested in, and that's the reason, one of the reasons why we chose seaweed as uh, a, a major project we're going to move forward with in uh, northwest Mexico. There's a huge opportunity with uh, the U.S. market, and so we can create value for um, a business taking the product to market by helping to set up the livelihood, helping design the model, and, so, and helping to manage the production to enable responsibly sourced product to be brought to market. So instead of looking for a partner, the founder of Olazul, Presidian Bo Perry, left Olazul and created it himself. And last year, he founded a company, Premium Oceanic, that you'll hear about next. And now we're working in close, closely together, developing a unique partnership where Olazul helps to create and build uh, and design that local production model, uh, enabling uh, the, the production of responsibly sourced seaweed product for US markets. We're also working on uh, a third revenue stream with, with government where we hope to be able to address local poverty and that would enable us to scale our production models up through coastal communities. So the team that we have to pull this together, um, we're, we're scientists, aquaculture specialists, business specialists, uh, social scientists, and that's mirrored on our advisory board as well. Uh, and we have two presidians, obviously, Bo Perry and Steve Teal, um, who sit on our board. The how does this help Chalene? Just to bring the story to a close. Well, Chalene approached all us all 18 months ago with his idea to set up and restore the pearl oyster He'd noticed that the baby oyster seeds were growing on the cages we were using um, for some shrimp experiments we were doing, and he asked us if we could have them. So we said, sure. We gave him some equipment and some advice as well on aquaculture. Well, he came back about two months ago and told us that he'd made it work. His local knowledge um, had enabled him to figure out how to, how to grow pearl oyster in La Paz Bay. And now he has three business ideas, but he needs help to get there. So this is a great opportunity for Olazul to take that local knowledge, bring our business expertise, help to develop a market, and, and help him succeed. Thank you. <laughs>